Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is the second in the familiarization and installation of IP Fire. What we're going to do right now is we're going to be logging into the IP Fire interface and we're going to be getting ourselves familiar with the user interface for it. If you remember when we were setting up the IP for the green zone, this is going to be the local interface for our firewall. However, when you just type it in as it is, you're going to be met with an error page that tells you that the address has refused to connect. If you go through into the documentation, you're going to see that you actually have to add port 444 and you're going to be met with another error that basically tells you you're speaking in plain HTTP to an SSL enabled server port. For you to gain access to the GUI, you actually have to type HTTPS column forward slash whoops forward slash and then the address of the green interface column 444 which is a secure port and then we're going to press on enter and now you're going to see that we are actually connected to something obviously this connection isn't private that's okay we're going to continue and it's going to give us the login box if you remember during install it gave us two users to create. One was root and one was admin. Root does not have GUI privileges, so you're going to have to log in with admin. Admin and whatever your password was. And then click on sign in. We are met with the home page of IP Fire. So welcome to the IP Fire home page. There's multiple tabs that sort of give a quick summary of what they hold. And what we're going to do right now, we're just going to go through each and every one and sort of get a little bit more familiar with the system. Under system, you have home, mail service, SSH, backup, GUI settings, system information, hardware vulnerabilities, shutdown and credit. Home is the dashboard. Mail service is any um, SMTP, uh, sort of like a mail notification system if something goes wrong. SSH access is pretty self-explanatory. It's just allowing SSH to your gateway. Backup is, do you want to create a backup for the logs, backup for the system, and then obviously restore from said backup. Under GUI settings, it's a very uh, limited page where you have the choice whether or not to display the host name, which is basically this part right here. Uh, if you want to have active refreshing the ajax speed meter is this little guy right here i personally like it so i leave them on and then if something goes wrong with ip fire you can have it make a sound if it disconnects or connects under system information it gives a detailed profile of what the system is running on in my case it is running on kernel 6.1 and the system information is several cores of e5 2695 v2 at 4 gigahertz i thought that the system information would be a little more complete but oh well it is what it is hardware vulnerabilities is actually a pretty interesting tab it tells you what vulnerabilities your system is affected by and whether or not it has been mitigated. In my scenario, because everything is virtualized, most of the mitigations are already applied from the hypervisor. But for you, it might be a little different. And all you, I think all you have to do is just install the mitigation packages from, from here, from IP Fire Pack Fire. And the next one is shutdown and credits. Shutdown is three menus where you either shut down, reboot, or you reboot and you do a file system check. And under credits is basically a list with all the programmers that have contributed to the development of IP Fire. Under status, this is actually a very interesting and feature rich summary of how your firewall is performing. You have System status, memory status, services status, 
and this is all different graphs and just general status of the different services and media. If we go under media, it's going to show us smart information for medium storage that we're working with. Because I am on a virtualized hard drive, you're not really going to see anything outside of VMware virtual ID hard drive with some generically generated serial number and IDs. If you are running this off of a physical hard drive, this will properly read whatever your hard drive is running with. And if continuing down, we have external network status. It gives us a graph with incoming and outgoing traffic and a little bit of DHCP information. We have the internal network information for the same thing, in go incoming and outgoing. Other VPNs, hardware graphs, connections, net traffic, so on and so forth. You can get a pretty good idea of how well it is summaried under this whole app with the status. It's actually pretty well done. If we go under network, now we have a couple of different tabs. We have zone configuration. This is where our different zones can be assigned VLANs or native and then they can be also bridged if this is what we want to do. Under domain name system, this is where we can do additional DNS servers. This is not dynamic DNS, please don't confuse it. This is just for, for the uplink DNS resolution servers. Something that also impressed me really is that it has a web proxy basically built in. I haven't really played with it yet, but it is very interesting uh, for me to see how it works. And we're probably going to explore that into a video further down the line. You have URL filters, which are very option rich and probably has a little bit of learning curve. But uh, just uh, giving it a quick sort of a bird's eye view, it's basically all the categories that you want to block, um, custom blacklist. It's not as point and click as it is with PFSense and PFBlocker NG. It, there is a little bit of extra work that needs to be done over here to get it properly and to work the way you want it to. But I am sure that once you learn how it works it won't be it won't be that much of a problem continuing down we have update accelerator when i was reading the documentation on it it wasn't really clear to me exactly how it works my interpretation is that it sort of like a cap i guess or or sort of like a graphic filter when it comes to performing updates or different services which, which use updates you know again the documentation wasn't very clear to me this is just my interpretation of it dhcp server it's just the dhcp server for the green zone this is where you would select everything with regards to all the local area network configuration additional options if you want to add fixed leases and the currently connected dynamic leases uh, detected by the firewall. Continuing down, we have captive portal. If you, there is a need for a captive portal on your network, this is where you would be configuring it. The host list, DNS forwarding, static routes, and assigned MAC addresses. Whoops, sorry, I forgot connection scheduler. Connection scheduler is, again, from my understanding when I was reading the documentation, is if you're not using the internet, it will automatically disconnect after a set amount of time. Or was it reconnect after a set amount of time? Like, for example, if I were to put this on 30, when it detects no internet activity, it will take 30 minutes to reconnect. Maybe this has a use in an environment where bandwidth is limited and network connection needs ne the network connection needs to be uh, rationed a little more strictly. Then this definitely has a use. If we continue further down, we have an edit a uh, host 
configuration. So if you kind of like a DNS override, like for example, 192, we're gonna do a host override for this firewall in particular. So 1.1 and we're gonna call it gateway. But when we type in um, gateway.office into our search bar, it would be taking us to the firewall. And I'm actually kind of excited that it's this simple to navigate and work around. DNS forwarding is for, I'm not really sure how to configure this. I haven't really played with it yet, but depending on the different zones that you have, you can assign different name servers with it. Further down the line, we have static routes or different networks and if we want the device to spoof a mac address like for example if your internet service provider is working with mac security this is one way to bypass it and wake on lan is like a wake on lan server um, you would type in the mac address with the different interfaces and then it'll send wake online packet. Under services, we have the different VPNs and dynamic DNS, IPsec configuration, open VPN configuration, dynamic DNS. I'm actually kind of curious which services are enabled and wow, it's actually a pretty rich list. Let's see if Cloudflare is here. No, Cloudflare is not here yet. We have domains like Google, Domopoly, DTDNS, DugDNS, DinDNS, EasyDNS, FreeDNS, Joker.com. I don't think these guys are in service anymore. Namecheap, no IP, OVH. Uh, okay, it's a little out of date, but it will work if it's if it's really really needed time server pretty self-explanatory you set the time server information for the upstream and then you can also set your ip fire firewall to be a time provider for the network as well or become a, stra a stratum i believe it was a stratum one device if it is like that stratum zero devices are GPS clocks and real time clocks. Um, by definition, I don't think a firewall can be a Stratum Zero device. I, I have to go back and read it again. I vaguely remember that firewalls were not really able to be Stratum Zero devices, but eh, you have the opportunity and the option to make IP Fire a Stratum One device on your network if you need something like that quality of service um pretty self-explanatory um it does have kind of like i'm not even sure how to describe this um profile i guess so for you to set it up you put in your down speed up speed and then the encapsulation of it and it works on I guess on on a profile for that. I don't really know um where was it? Oh, it is Doxis. Okay. Never mind that. Um everything is good. Um it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. Enter the down speed, the up speed and the type of service that you have and QoS will automatically um take care of the rest when um when it is activated continuing extra hd this is just um extra storage if your device needs it under firewall we have rules groups option intrusion prevention ip block list location block blue axis and ip table so ip rule uh, ip rules ip groups um sort of like aliasing in pf sense Firewall options, this is uh, basically, do you want it to do network address translation or not? If you don't want it to do address translation, you just 
turn off masquerading and all the logging and now you have a pass through device where we were in the option okay intrusion prevention it's i'm actually kind of surprised that it has an intrusion prevention um system built in I have to play with it a little bit to understand how it works so i'm not really going to give any assumptions on on its functionality IP block list, it's wow. Okay, so it has PF blocker built in. Some of them, anyways. Interesting. Okay, location block. So this is like um, geo blocking. So if you have visitors from a certain IP and you don't want them to visit to have access to your network, you just select which IPs or sorry, which country you want to block and uh, they will be blocked. And we're continuing with blue access. This is basically giving um, wireless clients access to the GUI. IP tables are pretty self-explanatory. It gives you a summary of uh, the, the, the IP tables that are uh, memorized into the device. IP fire, this is where it gets a little interesting. This is the package manager for the system. And um, if you want to install any different add-ons, it, it's actually a pretty comprehensive list. It, it's fairly populated. I think it's just under 100 packages. Most of them, maybe not necessarily for a home use scenario, but you do have the option to um, install it. Uh, when I was scrolling through, I saw that the um, you have a watchdog, you have Zabbix Agent 6, kind of out of date. Um, I would prefer to see uh, Zabbix Agent 6.4. Transmission Agent, Trace Route, you have a core tunnel, I believe. I haven't really played with it. GiveTPD, Telnet, Server, different tunnel applications. Uh, Spice client or sorry, Spice uh, server, the Spectre and Meltdown checker, and other add-ons which will definitely be useful if you had the utility to do them. Don't forget that you also have the option to install add-ons via the command line interface or the console interface as well. And finally, the tab that we're going to be looking at, I'm not really gonna go through them all of them um it this is already a 15 or 20 minute video but it gives you in the logs section you're going to see the different logs for the firewall we're just going to look at maybe three we don't have any error messages let's see if we have firewall logs yes we do we have a couple of um, things that were blocked and let's take a look at ips logs should be empty. We didn't have anything. URL filter logs. We don't have URL filter enabling. And then some system logs. And that's pretty much it for the walkthrough. Thank you for joining me on this one. I will see you guys in the next one.